So Bobby's going to like the topic of this week. I am. I'm excited. I'm not. <laughs> something that scares me. <laughs> uh, but what are we talking about this week, Bobby? Did you know that uh, camping is creepy? Yeah, I, I did know that. That's why I, I don't like it. Did going. you know that? I did. Bears and stuff? Yeah, there's lots of... Yeah, who goes? Who's, who likes to go camping? A lot of people. Me? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> 50% of the people in this room right now like to go camping. 50%? Oh, in this room right now. I like going camping. Yes. But I like going camping my way. Yeah. It's still camping. It's like glamping. Car, car <laughs> It's called car camping. Is it? No, it's called glamping. No, we're not. That's not glamping. Glamping, glamping is <laughs> different than. I want to go glamping. Yeah, I'd be down to do that. Would you? Yeah, why not? You want to tell everybody what your camping consists of normally? <laughs> sure. So, Just so they're aware of our different takes on what camping sure. is? Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, mine is very different, but okay. So I grew up in Jersey and near the Delaware River. And one of the things that my family and I used to do when I was growing up was go camping on the Delaware River. Uh, it was me, my dad, my brother, my uncle, cousin, their friends. I don't think my grandpa ever went with us. Uh. I don't think he ever went. I feel like he might have one time when I was really young, but we would do this usually once a summer, I believe, we'd wake up very early, like stupid early, be on the river by eight o'clock. So yeah, already none of this sounds fun to me. Let me let me let me explain it all. So we camp in the river. We start. We drive to where we start. Unpack the canoes. We either rent them or mm -hmm. usually my uncle would have one. You pack all your gear in the canoe. You, you know all your food, your sleeping bags, equipment, etc. Uh, stove, chairs, all that stuff. Go in the canoe and you just float on down a river. It's nice, <clears throat> relaxing, peaceful, and calming. You see nature, you see a lot of eagles and, and other birds, hawks, falcons, wow. seagulls. <laughs> wow. A lot of birds. A lot of, a lot of birds. <laughs> Lost seagulls from yes, the ocean. Yes, they just fall in the water. <laughs> they just go to water. Uh, occasionally you see bears. Uh, I've never, actually, I've only seen a bear one time. In my probably about twenty years of camping, and it on was the, with me, and it was with Lauren. <laughs> of course, I had it seen was a bear my fear. two other times, but we were in the car around the river, going to like the launch sites. Uh, so float on the river, fish, whatever you want to do, chill, drink, whatever. Get to our campsite, set up camp. Uh, this is as a kid. Yeah. Okay. Why? <laughs> it just seems like a lot for a kid. I remember uh, when I was like I'm a kid, drinking. I was no. I meant like just the the hard work. I mean, I guess because I'm. It's not that hard. You just you're floating. I'm just picturing in a like me and my brother like having to do this, and I can't. I would just see us complaining. It's not the whole for time. everybody. I know. For one of the things I always remember, and I'm sure my dad and uncle and cousin remember too, and my brother. You're hitting the table. Sorry. Is we we would always. Like bring music with us. We were it was me, my dad, and my brother in the in the canoe, and we would always have like this huge like boombox stereo. And this was the summer that like Who Let the Dogs Come Out came on, and we were just on repeat blasting it going down the river. I remember like my uncle and cousin being like, "Turn it off, stop playing that song or whatever." So that's a fond memory of that. Sounds like nice, nice memories. So anyway, get to camp, set up camp, make your food. We used to eat spam. That was like the traditional. Did your mom go? Was it all no. guys? No, it was all guys. Ah. That's um, not a family trip. Then. So we're camping on the river. There's no okay. access. There is access to it, but it's only for the um, like rangers and stuff like that. There's you can't drive and camp there. You have to be. You can only access. And there's no running water. No running water. Electric, right? There's there's um, outhouses, I guess, or just sometimes like a toilet. In it's the a hole in the ground that they put a toilet, a toilet seat over. on. It's the best place in the world to go to the bathroom, in my opinion. Uh, you know. Make your food, camp, sleep, wake up, make your breakfast, chill, head on back on the river, get to our end site, and we're done. And I've been doing this on and off since I was probably around 10. 
Uh, I started doing it again more. You know what's funny? I did not know that you did this as a child. I thought you just really? like wanted to start doing it now. Yeah. I told you this. I told you this. You forgot. <laughs> um, I mentally blocked it out. It just seemed really rough. <laughs> yeah. And then I got, so me and my friends, we would do it. We'd go in high school and we would go like rafting. And it was, you'd go to a, like a, a camp grounds and they drive you up, you'd raft down and it was more of like party atmosphere, get to the campsite. There's, you know, that's where the, we would do the car camping and it was fun. I was with my friends, but it wasn't like the camping that I was used to growing up. So then uh, around the year 2014, I started finding people on YouTube who I started watching going camping and it kind of relit that spark that I had from when I was a kid and I found an inflatable a uh, kayak canoe that I could fit in my car and pack all my gear. So I started doing it again with my friends. And ever since then, been doing it, going. Usually it's just an overnight trip. We've done a couple of two night trips. Um, I actually have videos on YouTube of some of those. Like I, I made a video and my brother had, I, I can't find it. Though. I don't know if he had to get rid of it or there's music in it, but. Um, Do you want to hear what my childhood camping was like? Real quick. I wanted to say a thank you to all the uh, camping YouTubers that I found who relit this spark and kind of like allowed me to go camping while I was in the, in the middle of New York City and just while I'm bored at work, I could watch uh, my favorite and probably the one I've been watching the most longest is Joe Robinette. Which um, is the one with the dog. He's, yep, he's the guy with the dogs. Ah. <laughs> uh, there's I only know guy with dog, <laughs> triage man. Triage man. <laughs> uh there's uh, another channel. It's called the Outdoor Gear Review. I think his name is Luke. He was he mostly he does a lot of videos on like reviewing gear. So that's kind of where I got like the gear aspect of it. Uh, there's a couple of guys, Jim Baird, Baird or Bird, it's B A I R D. He is in Canada and he does a lot of cool trips, long trips by himself, solo trips. Uh, I've been watching him for a while. My Self Reliance. The guy's name is Sean James. He does more of the uh, homesteading, like building a cabin in the woods and stuff. And I've been watching him for a while. He's really cool. A uh, channel called Lost Lakes, similar to Joe Robinette, where they just go on these long seven day, 10 day, two week trips in the Canadian wilderness. Algonquin Park is one of the ones they go to a lot and I love watching them. Uh, there's also this guy called Steve Wallace who <clears throat> does weird camping. He'll go like camp under a freeway or in the middle of a roundabout or He'll go into like a Walmart parking lot when it snows and like build an igloo and go camp there. So he does stealth park, uh, stealth camping he does, which is just very interesting and cool. So thank you to all those guys for. That was very sweet. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure they won't see this or hear it, but if you, you don't know, if you are one who also enjoys. I mean, the title is camping is creepy. Maybe yeah. they'll come across it because the word camping's in it. If you are one of those who, if you're someone who enjoys camping and you want some, some good people to watch, go ahead. Go, go watch all those people I told you about. There's a lot more and there's a lot more that I watch, but those are the ones that I wanted to give a little thanks to. As you can see, so my one of my topics that I took the lead on was YouTube is creepy because that's like my life. And this is a topic that I decided Bobby would probably really like. So you're going to hear a lot about his, like he knows a lot more about real, this real camping <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's I'm watching camping videos. I still think the camping I do, there's a lot more hardcore, intense ways to camp. Yeah, when I watch, when you have your videos on and I look at them, there is zero, zero part of me that would want to do anything. Yeah, they're very intense, a little dangerous, but I watch them and I just think, why? Why do you like to suffer? Well, <laughs> why are we here? It's because you're out there. Just to suffer. You're out there in the wilderness and you have freedom and it's just. It's funny. I want to say it's escape. like a. Maybe it's like a man versus woman thing. However, I know plenty of men who would hate it and plenty of women who would probably love it. So I'm oh, not yeah. going to no, bring it down. <laughs> no, I don't think it's that. To that. I think it's just people who like it enjoy that kind of being like free out in the woods. I find a lot of comfort being in the woods and just the, surrounded by the trees and the leaves and the Ooh, this river and all that. It's very calming and relaxing. And it's where I like feel at home probably because I did it growing up and it's something I've always done and enjoyed. So well, this is a good topic because I'm like, it's going to be like <laughs> the two sides of it. Because yeah. While you think that it's really nice and relaxing and it's, that's valid. 
I think it's really scary and <laughs> tiring. And I do a very different form of camp. Like camping to me before I met you was not that. That was like surviving. What you do is surviving. Not, we're thriving. Not after. camping. We are thriving. And I we are like, not surviving, yeah, trust me. You're surviving. <laughs> no, we have a canoe full of coolers with food and drinks and all good stuff. And now on the flip side of that one, I was a kid. <laughs> I was a kid once. We, well, my mom tells stories that we were in a tent at one point, but I was too young to know. I give them props because I can't imagine being in a tent with Melody. <laughs> <laughs> like for an extended trip. I don't know how they did it well, or sure slept or. You didn't go when you were like. She said when we were like babies. That's crazy. That's what she says. <laughs> I wouldn't bring a baby camping. I wouldn't either. It's just it makes things like 10 times harder for no reason. Yeah. Wait till they're a little older so they can like, I don't know, enjoy nature. I'd wait till they're more. at least like three or four. Yeah. You can go and camping if, for like the day, but I think overnight when you need stuff for your baby in yeah, general, it's, it's just like if you're having a rough night and you're camping, there's nothing you can do. If you're having yeah. a rough night here, you can like I know a lot of people do it and I'm sure a lot of people do it, yeah. but I think it depends on your temp like yeah. you as parents temp. I mean, there's people who are much more outdoor enthusiasts than I am. Yes, but we had that. Then we had a pop up camper, which is they still make them. I don't know why I'm describing them, but they're these things that you like crank. They they fold flat and then when you get to your campsite, you crank it. It's probably electric now, yeah, but I'm back sure in the day it was like a, a hand crank. You had to crank it up and it was like half tent, half, half RV. And yeah, we would each have a side, cool. like the kid, me and my brother slept on one side and then my parents slept on the other side of it. And there was like a little kitchenette thing and that was it. Um, and then we eventually upgraded to an RV. And that is the main camping I remember because when we had the pop-up, I mean, I kind of remember it, but I was definitely a lot younger. RV camping, I remember the most. And it was awesome because we would drive all over the place. And while we were driving, I, I mean, you're not supposed to do it now. I don't know if you were in back in the day. but sure we you weren't allowed to. Yeah, we would literally like be up and about in the RV. Yeah. <laughs> um, walking around, making food. Yeah, you're not allowed to, but I'm yeah. sure many people do it. Um, you could take naps. It was great. Uh, and then we would pull into campgrounds, like we would go to actual campgrounds that had playgrounds and act arts and crafts activities for the kids and electricity and bathrooms. running water and bathrooms. And we would have like night events, which were awesome. They had karaoke. They had like dances. You could go make friends. Your parents could go drink and have a good time and like have their kids be entertained. Like that's... <laughs> that's the case. And then if you wanted, you could go fishing or if you wanted, you could go for a hike, but it wasn't all there was to do. There was a bunch of stuff and we would stay for weeks at a time. Weeks. Yeah. You wouldn't stay for weeks. Yeah. A week. You would say a for week to two weeks. We would go from like campground to care. So we might oh. do one campground for a week. Then continue. We drove all over the place. We drove like from North to South once and then back and then just stayed at campgrounds. That's what I want to do all the way. Yeah, see, I'm cool with doing that with children. I feel like with children, Same. your idea of camping is a nightmare. <laughs> well, that's why you do it for a day or two, not weeks at a time. I would go with like a, well, you a have select to go few of my friends to do. My dream camping trip is to go for a week uh, up in Canada. There's a place called Algonquin Park and you have to portage or there's carry. grizzlies there. Your you want to do the carrying thing? Yes. Yeah, I will to. not be joining because you. Because <laughs> that is when you're in the ultimate, like, wilderness. You're out there. There's no... I, I will not be Where I go camping now, I, I can hear cars at night. I don't want that. Me and Melody will be... Yeah, I don't want you to come. At a resort. <laughs> I don't want you to come. <laughs> a Canadian resort somewhere. Um, but I also want to do the RV camping because you can go... It's all the national and state parks and see a yeah. lot of cool stuff. But there's also things to do for the kids. Like, yeah, it's for, only for kids. so long, unless your kid is really outdoorsy. Yeah. Which I feel like most of them are not anymore. But like, if they are, then maybe you could get away with it. But I remember like a couple of days into camping, we would already be annoying our parents that we were bored. Oh, I'm something sure. To do. There was arcades you can go to. I think there still are, but. Sure, it's a lot easier now that kids can, you know, they have the internet at their fingers and yeah, they can keep themselves occupied. We had Game Boys. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have very fond memories of camping, but it was always like a vacation, not work. <laughs> like yours, when we when I go camp, which we'll get into the, the couple times I went with you, um, but uh, when we go with Bobby, like I'm exhausted by the end of the day. Whereas when we would go camping. 
we use, if we were staying for multiple days, everything would be set up. You could sleep in, you don't have to get up early. And then you can literally like go take a bike ride, go walk, go to arts and crafts and paint ceramics, go to the pool and go paint swimming. Ceramics. And then at night you could, you make a fire and you'd all like the adults would tell scary stories or funny stories or whatever to the kids. And then you make s'mores. I don't think I ever told scary stories and <gasps> I don't recall like my dad or uncle or anyone. Oh, well, then really. you're gonna they like, might have. You're going to like the end of this. Oh, uh, episode because I'm going to be sharing some of the most popular campfire scary stories, which I definitely heard nice. when I was young. It's like before the internet. It's how viral scary stories came about was at campgrounds around campfires. You never told stuff. What did you guys talk about around the campfire? I don't know. Whatever we want. <laughs> Random stuff. Listen, we listen to music. We listen to We had scary stories. That's what you're supposed to tell around a campfire so that you know, nobody sleeps at night. You're supposed to. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> I also refuse to camp anywhere where grizzly bears are or wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Canada has them. Okay. <laughs> grizzly bear. Okay. So the, the la was that the last time I went camping was the bear sighting time? I think so. No, that was the Helgramites was the last oh, God. Time. Yeah. So every time I've gone camping with Bobby, something terrible has happened. Not I the think one time we went just you and I. Yeah. But that was when it was really hot and I couldn't sleep all night because we were watching. Remember we were watching Star Wars. Have we gone more? Phone? Wait, have we gone <clears throat> multiple times? Just me and you went once. Really? Yeah. And then me, you, uh, and Justin went. And then me, you, and Dexter went. Three times then? We were with somebody. There was only one time just me and you went. Hmm, okay. And Dexter. We brought Dexter with us that time too. But I remember just you and I going without Dexter. No, there's no way I would have went without Dexter. We did. There's no way I would have went without it. Dexter. No. <laughs> You're wrong. You are incorrect. Whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've only gone a couple times, like to that trip. Then there was the one time we went with your parents and a bunch of your friends. Yeah. It's like my first time. That was fun. That was that. The assault. rest of them went downhill after that. I don't know if it's because creatures can sense my fear <laughs> of them, but, uh, then this, yeah, the next time we went, Bobby just wanted to go with me and you. I swear Dexter was there because I am pretty sure I was worried he was going to get hot all night, like overly hot. It was a really hot night and- there's nothing. That's the, the thing that scares me about going camping is there is if you're not at a campground where there's like other people around or a main hub with a phone you're in the middle of the woods and something happens, you're screwed. Like yep. you either need to that try adds to, to the excitement or the fear. Uh, so when we're laying in the tent and it's, I don't know. 80 degrees, 80, go, 90 degrees. I don't go camping when it's hot anymore. I've learned yeah. my lesson. We couldn't sleep because it was just so hot and there's yeah. nothing you can do because there's no air conditioner. It needs to be in the 60s like, at night, max. Yeah, so we stayed up and just watched like Star Wars until we finally passed out for a little bit. But that. that was our first camping trip. Uh, so not so didn't sleep then. Then the second camping trip was me, you, and uh, our Justin. friend Justin, who's also another wilderness man. <laughs> and I went and right before we were, or like a couple miles before we were going to stop at our campsite, we saw a black bear down by the river yep. uh, drinking. And then it ran back up into the woods. And then I asked Bobby, oh, our campsite is like far away from here, right? <laughs> he was like, no, it's like no, it's right like a mile the down bed. the river there. Um, so all night I was Googling bear attack stuff and how to protect yourself from bear attacks and how likely bear attacks are. And I didn't sleep all night. <laughs> so I was just worried every time I heard a little noise. Oh, we had Dexter with us too. Yeah. And Bobby was telling me that Dexter would scare away the bear. And I said, no, I read that dogs actually make bears more angry. <laughs> it will tend to charge you if a dog comes at them. So yeah, didn't sleep at all that night either. I was just worried about, you know, bears attacking us while we slept. Um, and then the final time that we went or that I went, was uh, we took my sister and her husband and her friends out into the woods because they thought it would be fun to, <laughs> to video us roughing it in the woods. And rough it we did because... <laughs> so first of all, it, I honestly, this is one of those moments where I wish somebody was filming the entire thing yeah, because I, I would have film it. I would have loved we were way to in see... Shock. Yeah, so like earlier in the day we had seen... And you're going to have to... Oh, I have it. Hold on. Well, for the for the audio listeners, for the audio listeners, you're going to have to Google this. But for the visual listeners, this uh, not accurate to size. This is it was smaller than this, but not that much smaller. It's about um, half. This is about and double, to the audio listeners. Size. Just picture like a giant 
not even a giant. Maybe like if you put out your, your thumb and your index finger. Or like three to four inches. As far as you could. Three to four inches. Uh, four to five. Okay, fine. It's pretty long. They were pretty big. Um, picture that with lots of legs, thick, thick boys. It, these in, they're insects, by the way. Insects. <laughs> I didn't make. They're that called. Clear. They're called. They're called helgramites. Helgramites. Google it or look at this. <laughs> or um, listen to my audio explanation. It's a bug that looks like a giant centipede with with huge pincers at the end of its face, like. That'll bite you or pinch you. What or are they? The larva form hell. They're the larva form of Dobson flies. Dobson flies. I learned a lot about them after this incident. But basically, we were around the fire and we see one of these guys just chilling by, like near the fire. Um, and I'm pretty sure somebody killed it because it was it was really creepy looking. We had never seen it before, and somebody killed it. I was like, oh, like <laughs> thank God we saw that that thing and killed it so that <laughs> we wouldn't run into it later that night. So. It rains and we're all huddled around a tent and it's dark and the rain stops and we're like, okay, we can go back out to the fire and sip until we're ready to go to bed. And all of a sudden, slowly, as we're sitting around the fire, we start noticing more of those things we had killed earlier are starting to crawl out of the ground and toward like the fire area. And I'm not talking like a couple, I'm talking like hundreds, at least hundreds hundreds of these big pincer things climbing out of the ground like some sort of zombie movie and going toward the fireplace. It was so bad at one point that like you, you, it was hard to step around them without stepping on one. And keep in mind, some of us had sandals on and these things are big. And also another side note, we were trying to kill some of them and they wouldn't die easily. They were like cockroaches. We were trying to, we would cut them in half and they would continue like with half of their, then we would create more because we would cut them in half and then <laughs> that one would become two and they would just go. And I, I think we, I was in like, it was shock. It was legit shock. I didn't know yeah. what to do. I didn't know how to be. I didn't know. I was internally just freaking out. And what's funny is everybody, at, like everybody at different points started slowly freaking out as well. So you would be like, oh my God, there's so many of them. What are they? Are they dangerous? Are they poisonous? Like we didn't know anything about them. And if they bit us and we're in the middle of the woods, what would happen? So I'm trying to like Google on my phone while standing on something because they're also climbing up things. <laughs> so like you can't escape them. Meanwhile, they're trying to kill as many as they could. And it was just unstoppable. And then we learned they're the, all that about the dob supply stuff. They are not poisonous or dangerous if you ever run into them, but they will bite you and it hurts. Yeah. So <laughs> pincers will like bite into your skin and probably leave a mark and hurt. So, so they're not totally. The, I had never experienced these things before and I'd been camping for so many years. So apparently they come, they come out of the ground or. To they, mate? Is that what it was? No, like they're, they, they're the larva form. So the eggs, so they hatch. In like, oh, they're also drawn to light. Yeah. So because we had the fire going and then we had flashlights shining directly into the ground to look for them, we were summoning more out of the ground without realizing it. Uh, so they, I had never seen them before because we had, we went when I normally don't go, which is the beginning, middle of the summer. It was like mid June. Yeah. Keep in mind the funniest, it was hot. the funniest part of this is it was like my sister's first time. Yeah out in the, like the wilderness since we used to do RV camping. So this was like, so I was she, also she, freaking she, out. She has not gone again. Because I had never experienced them before. Never seen them before. Didn't know what to do. Um, eventually we all like we gave, gave up, up. <laughs> and we went to our tents and they would crawl up the tent and you'd hear them crawling you up the tent. You would see shadows of them. And then they just the hear tent. them so all and sliding down like, shoo. So all night you'd hear, and then you hear. Once they got up too, too steep, they would just. So all uh, night, <laughs> Lauren's sister and brother-in-law had were borrowing a tent, and I knew, realized, like, oh crap, there is a small hole in that tent. So I was very worried all night, waiting for her to be like, oh my god, they're in the tent. What do we do? Thankfully, it didn't happen. I don't think I've had a good night's sleep while camping in the woods ever. I've had since great I've night. Been there. The last time I went, which was a month or so, last month, two months ago. Yeah, Bobby still goes. I refuse. I was probably honestly probably the best night of sleep I've had out. In the woods a long time. 
I maybe. I vow to only go camping again if it's at a campground where I can be in an RV <laughs> or I understand in some sort of situation where I could escape. Like if that happened and we were at a campground, I would 100% have went to a hotel. Yeah, there's a lot of creepy things that can happen in out, out in there, out in them woods there. I've experienced a few, probably the freakiest, which I believe I've mentioned on the podcast before, are fisher cats. Oh yeah, you did. When I went with my, when I went with my brother in law Andy, we were we both got up to go to the bathroom at the same time, and we just heard like this laughing cackling up in the trees, you know, middle of the night. Had no idea if it was like an owl or a fox or what it was, and it ended up being Fisher cats. Um, one time when I was with my friend Justin, I had it was like I don't know one thirty in the morning, and I had went to bed and I just laid down. I had just fallen asleep, and all of a sudden, I hear him go, Bobby. Bobby, there's a bear by his head. There's a bear. And I'm like, oh, crap. I get up. He puts the light on and it was a raccoon. And it was, I, I we, we had a little like drawstring duffel bag thing full of snacks, which were also in bags, which we didn't hang in the tree because we were dumb. And I'm like, oh, they can't smell it. It's in fine. And this it's raccoon, fine. we had it strapped down to one of our inflatable uh, canoes. And it, my friend said, the raccoon was yanking, yanking, yanked at the bag and ran off with the bag. And we woke up in the morning and we walked and we found like the bags all ripped open and all the snacks eaten. Yeah, raccoons um, are not like raccoons won't come and attack you, but they will steal your yeah. stuff. So like it was pretty cool. when We <laughs> went one time with Dexter. You weren't there. And all this we see sitting in a chair next to me. We're can't, around the fire chilling. All of a sudden he just goes. Rrr, rrr. I'm like, oh, God, what is he here? So <laughs> look around and I like have my headlight on. I look over and I see about. 20, 30 feet, yeah, probably like 50 feet away. It's just a raccoon just stopped looking at us. I'm like, oh, he saw the raccoon. Good job, bud. Yeah, um, they're, yeah you can't be, can't be uh, careless with your belongings yeah. in the woods. Really haven't, had, take it. really haven't had any creepy experiences. Uh, one time my friend Justin and I, we went camping and we were getting off to go to our campsite and it, the river was high because it rained and it was dark because we, and it was that night and we were just getting off the river and we're going through the brush to get to the site. And all of a sudden, like, we see this huge thing, like, running in right in front of us. And it was it ended up being just a baby deer that was, like, chilling in the, like, hiding out. And it, like, ran right in front and scared the crap out of us. But, um, yeah, thankfully, I haven't really had many... You Bad. just named a bunch. <laughs> That's <laughs> nothing. Mean. That's nothing. Every time I've gone has been bad. Actually, and the night that it was hot, we had those people right next to us that were loud all night. Let's just... People. Yeah, but at campgrounds, there's, there's a puppies. lot. Trust me. So in preparation for this episode uh, today, <laughs> like nothing today. like waiting until the last minute, I listened to some creepy stories on YouTube that people had. And there wasn't any like in particular story that I want to talk about, but they all had the same thing, which is usually hearing things in the woods, hearing people walk around your tent at night. Yeah, which I've heard many. Remember, yeah. I was always like, I hear footsteps. And Bobby's like, no, it's things falling off the trees. Yeah, a lot it of sounds the like footsteps. What can sound like a big bear in the woods is often just a squirrel. It, and that's usually what it is. Just rustling in the leaves. I can't. Um, <laughs> there was definitely some creepy things um, that I heard in the stories. One of the things that I heard a lot was basically like people who are homeless out in the woods that you encounter. God, yeah, I always forget about Which that. Which is thankfully not really where we go is where I go camping is a national park area. Or it's not really a national park, but it's it's a protect. I don't know. It's supposed to be. Um, so we, I've never encountered any homeless people in that area. Uh, but it's definitely something that can happen. People, you know, squat, not squatters, but just, you know, homeless people go out and live in the woods. So you could encounter them. I've heard a lot of a couple of stories talked about them. Also, uh, Hunters. You know what else are in the woods sometimes? Bears. Dead bodies. Dead bodies. Like, I always thought if I'm in the woods, I'm like, I'm going to come across something I don't want to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that stuff can happen. <laughs> that can happen. It depends where you go, obviously. If you're just. Yeah. Well, you know where that doesn't happen? Campground. <laughs> Family I'm sure it's happened before. You just come across a body while you're walking down the trail. You never know. Uh, the dumbest serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of the stories talked about. Uh, hunters kind of spooking on people. Oh, I was like, what, accidentally shooting people? Uh, no, but shooting at them or oh, basically trying to like get them away. Because a lot of times it could be also it could be people who are like living off grid who don't want people to find them. 
Ah. So that's the thing that could happen. That's that's pretty creepy. Again, where I go, never. I say, so stay within the designated camping areas. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of people will just kind of go in the random woods that aren't designated areas Oh, to yeah, camp. I learned that about bears, too. <laughs> I, have, I know lots of bear facts, but especially, well, grizzly bears, there's the absolutely nothing you can do. You like Shoot them. Yes, you can. Gri- <laughs> yes, you can. Usually Don't. if you're in. That's what's sad. Like, I think bears are so cool and cute yeah. sometimes, but like they also scare me. I mean, any giant animal with teeth scares me. Like sharks scare razor me. Razor sharp claws. Yes. Yeah, sh- sharks scare me. Yeah. Lions scare me. But bears are more are the thing that like I would encounter more often around where we live. Yeah. But um, they oh. did say that very rarely black bears will attack people in general. Black yeah. bears are pretty docile. The only time that they will attack you, it usually happens with hikers or people that are off trail because you go into their designated territory without yep. realizing. And then they will charge you because they don't want you near the territory. Or if they have babies, yep. don't go anywhere near them. <laughs> Or if they're starving. Yeah. You got to hope. So there's certain times of the year where it's more dangerous to be around a black bear. I'm always, yeah, I'm always a little up, concerned. Like right after they wake up from hibernating. I'm always <laughs> concerned about going later in the year when they are getting ready to hibernate because I don't know if they're going to be a little Yeah, they're usually frisky. To, but frisky. I've, it's usually right before hibernation or right after. Yeah. No, you go never, and find that sweet spot while they're like <laughs> out and about. You're yeah. All right. We always, you know, we put our, we throw our food up in the tree and they, that's the biggest thing is just make sure your food's packed away. See, that's why I like the RV because I know yeah. you're safer in there I get than it. a tent. <laughs> it is a creepy feeling yeah. knowing that you're helpless. A very, that's why I don't like it. You feel helpless. All that's like quote unquote protecting you from the world is a very thin vinyl layer, layer of vinyl or whatever material your tent is made out of. Uh, but it's weird how like comforting and how comfortable I am when I'm just out there in the woods and it is interesting because I'm not. I'm the opposite. I feel very I, uncomfortable I, most of the time. I think for me, it's kind of like getting on a plane that once I'm. I was just going to say, do you feel comfortable in, in cities? No, right? No, not really. See, I feel very comfortable in cities. I mean. Maybe it's like, because that's like the complete opposite. I'm comfortable, <laughs> but I don't like it. I like it. Yeah. I don't like living there anymore, but I love like visiting and being in a city. I feel safer. It makes me reason. anxious just with all the people and crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm not afraid of it. It just makes me anxious. Yeah, I just I find comfort out there. Something that I've always also heard stories of is people who go camping and I forget exactly how it goes, but I think it's more so the like the West Coast of the US, Pacific Northwest, that they let people go to these areas to camp and it's areas they know that are visited by like aliens or something or it's bigfoot i can't remember exactly what it was i'm just remembering this now that i heard that oh, they know that like these to like feed them <laughs> like a horror movie i think like it they was sacrifice them I for the greater think good it was to do with aliens because you a lot of times people go missing when they go hiking or camping yeah i don't think i have any interest well i mean camping in general i'm very picky with nowadays yeah but i don't have any interest i think in going to the midwest in the middle of like the wilderness there that freaks me out. I do not alone. I would never go alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's something that's always intrigued me is we well, went alone once and you said you didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like it. There was people very close by. Uh, I felt like they thought I was like creeping on them maybe, but uh, this one creepy man. The, like, yeah. It is creepy when there's only one guy. Just yeah. Hanging out and you're like, it was cool. But the wor- like the part I didn't like, I'd like to do it again. Maybe it'd be a little more enjoyable now that I'm more accustomed, you know, like used to doing this camping. I just just lonely at night, like oh. by the campfire after you know when you're not there yeah. to like hang at out with people. Rough. I think for anybody, I just went to bed early. I would think I went to bed at like nine thirty and just that's when I didn't have good gear. I had a ten dollar inflatable like pool raft that I use as my air oh mattress, my and it broke in the middle of the night, and I was basically just sleeping on the floor or the the ground. What is your, you brought it up, but what is your thoughts on like Bigfoot or Sasquatch? Think he's, think I, he's real. I think it's something that I want to believe, just like aliens. I do believe in aliens for sure. I definitely believe that there's something that there's Maybe aliens, stuff. but not in the way that it's portrayed in movies. I don't know. I, there's something. There's got to be something. Uh, Bigfoot is, I think, more so like a fantasy thing that I want to believe in. Uh, I, I, I mean, so much of the world feels unexplored to me, especially like 
you know, the deep ocean. Oh yeah. That there are very vast lands of wilderness that we don't really. Oh my god, I'm so scared to do the deep ocean episode. That's like one of my biggest fears. <laughs> There's just the areas world. of like the world. I, maybe and, that's why. <gasps> well, we have the wood pic, the woods picture behind you. Yeah. Um. But like, I think things that freak me out the most are like the unexplored. So yeah. woods, like very dark, deep woods that you don't know what's in it. I get space it. Space that you don't know what's in it and the deep ocean. Yeah. So that's why I probably feel more comfortable in cities or mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. I, I I think it's like a 50-50. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Bigfoot. But at the same time, I'm not like, oh, there's definitely a Bigfoot kind of thing. It yeah. would be cool. I don't know if there is. Who knows? I feel like what? somebody would have, for all the people that are actually looking for it and dedicating their lives yeah. to finding it because it's on land, I feel like it'd be way, like I could understand somebody not finding something in the deep ocean that's hard to, that's huge and yeah. hard and you can't get that deep. But like the woods, know. you could kind of. I think kinda, there is. I've <laughs> definitely, I've, a lot of the YouTube people that I watch, uh, uh, not Survivor, yeah, Survivor Man, Les Stroud, He's had Bigfoot experiences and then he had like a whole show about trying to like find a Bigfoot. Uh, I think there's something. I don't know what it is. It could be. Who knows? Some people think it's some sort of like ape like creature that could be out there. Um, I just remembered one of the stories I didn't end up telling because I told it in a YouTube conspiracy video. Look up my YouTube conspiracy videos if you're curious, but that like Russian camping one where they were in the oh, woods. Oh yeah, that was good. And there was like a, it was a conspiracy, these campers. It's so weird. I can't remember. It's really good. Maybe I'll try to do it on a different episode that has to do with it. I forgot for this one, but it's like, I can't, I can't even remember all the points, but it's such weird. They found these campers dead or hikers or whatever they were um, dead, but in very weird ways. Oh, that's what it was. It was the snow though. It wasn't just camping. So I'll, I'll do maybe winter. It was the Yeti. <laughs> it, it was in the snow in Russia. Yeah. And basically what happened to these people was so unexplainable, like that they all died in these really brutal, weird ways. And mm -hmm. they like still to this day, I don't think they have an actual explanation for what happened. Um, but one of the biggest conspiracy theories is that Russia was using that area because it was like, the vast wilderness, they were using it for chemical weapon testing and things. So they think that these people just got was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But yeah, I mean, that's I have very fond memories of camping. Yeah, I think that I like my kind of camping. Yeah, I, I like my kind of camping. I like your kind of camping. I think uh, why I like my camping is different than why I like your camping. My camping's more relaxing. And I find my camping more relaxing, See? but that's what everyone, <laughs> everyone likes different things. I enjoy, I, oh, one of my favorite things about going camping is all the prep work and packing. And I like the idea of knowing that whatever I bring is all we have to like survive off or live off. So it's like exciting for me to know whatever I'm packing. I, I want everything now that I'm, we've been doing a lot longer and I've gotten better gear is it's cool to me to, to be able to bring everything I need and nothing more, nothing less to like have a use for every little thing. That's funny. That's like the opposite. That gives me anxiety. Like when I have What's to so pack, like when I have to pack everything into a carry on bag, yeah. that gives me anxiety. Cause I'm like, what if I can't bring this thing that I need when I get there? But then just in my it. thing, I could just buy it, but in yours, you yeah. can't. So I mean, as long like, as you have the, I mean, we're, again, we're only going for a day. So still we could literally bring you have an emergency. We have, I mean, we have a medical kit that will help with most things, but yeah, it's I enjoy it. Uh, one of my like fondest memories in life is when I was young and I it's I still can vividly visually remember waking up. I remember exactly what I was wearing. I was wearing like all gray, like gray sweatpants and a gray sweater. It was like Gap or something on it. And I were getting up. I got up early and I walked uh, from the campsite down to the river, which is, you know, maybe like, I don't know, 50 to 100 yards. Not very far. You can see the river from the campsite walking along and it's early morning so it's cold and all there's all this fog on the river and it's all just lifting off the river and i remember just like, wow this is like really cool so whenever i go camping now on the river i always try to what well, i usually do i wake up early and i go look at the fog lifting off the river and you know there's something i enjoy that's nice it is nice it's a nice memory it is a nice little memory yeah i enjoy it it is a lot of work it's funny i think your memory well what you like about camping is like i guess not the lonely. I was going to say the things that I like the most about camping or my memories of camping when I was a kid is like 
having the time where we're disconnected and can like connect with our parents around yeah. the fire or siblings or do some sort of activity where you're, yeah, I don't know, not like your mom's not worried about cleaning the house or making dinner or like, I mean, I guess she's still, <laughs> she was still worried about that at the camera, but not as bad. It was kind of like taking people out of that situation and I don't know, being out in the quiet and yeah, that's the same, just different, but it's also where I go camping is so beautiful and so scenic and it's so easily accessible that I just, it's very, I just love it there. So to be able to just, it's very easy for me now to go. And it's fun. I remember my parents, they would go, they'll do like a day trip. They'll, they'll go to a campsite and they'll go up and they'll go canoeing. And my dad, because he's been doing it for so long, he'll bring like a cooler and a grill and all this stuff. And everyone else that would be on the trip and with the like camping service, they'd bring like a shopping bag maybe, or some, very few things like sandwiches. And they'd be like, wow, you guys have all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, like we know how to do it. We oh, yeah, to- we used to have TVs. Well, yeah. your parents do too now. Yeah, like you- we used to set up a TV outside. Like, So I say when you're not surviving, you're thriving. You're going out. It's very cool. That's my favorite type of thing. It's camping. cool to like go out, pull over on the side of the river and set up a grill and make, you know, like burgers and hot dogs and have a beer and just chill in the, in the water. And it's like making this small little area your home for that time or whatever it may be. If people are making s'mores, you need to try replacing the chocolate with a Reese's cup because it's phenomenal. And also, if you're into sweet and salty things, replace the graham cracker with saltine crackers because it's delicious. I don't think I ever did that. It's very good. I forget who told me that. Maybe Chrissy? Maybe. Maybe my sister? Uh, One last thing. So a dream of mine, which I, you know, can still do some is... I love your retirement dream. No, this is a different one. This is something... I always wanted to make do like make YouTube videos where I take people, either YouTubers or people who aren't oh, woodsy. I remember this. Take one. them yeah. on the trip that I, I do a different one. and kind of do like not like a therapy session, but like talk to them in the beginning about all their worries and what they're afraid of. Uh, <laughs> what if it's me and my worry is being out in the wilderness? Yeah. So a lot of people have <laughs> What that. are your worries? I'd be like, right now. And then talk to them <laughs> so around anxious. the campfire. And then the next day, and I think it would be really cool to hear that contrast because every person- It could be therapeutic to get away from technology for, for sure. some people. And every person that I've taken on the trip who hasn't done it before, they're always like, when, we going, when are we going again? This is amazing. This is awesome. I mean, it's usually people who want to go camping and whatnot, but still, when we do it, they're always like, oh, we got to do it again. So, I'm sorry I don't share your love of being out in the wilderness. It's fine. I understand. We have other things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not many go, people in general enjoy it yeah so that's true i understand i do enjoy going to campgrounds though and yeah. a lot of people don't like doing that i really want to get a, a cool rv and travel around with yeah we said when, when the kid you know what we used to do we used to wait till the summer and then when we were out of school we would like spend the whole summer yeah going from place to place it to sounds place. awesome yeah because the national fun. we got the to national see a parks lot. and the state parks cheaper. are incredible it's cheaper you get to see a lot and um you're like i don't know you have more of a close knit bond yeah. than going to like hotels and stuff because you kind of have to like rough it together and yeah. figure out stuff together and I don't know, keep the campsite good together. I was trying to research this last night, which was a really bad idea. You don't uh, say. At like 11 30, 12 o'clock at night in bed before I was going to bed. I was like, oh, I didn't do my talking points for the podcast. I should do it. And then I just lie, <laughs> lay awake, really nervous. And I was no joke Googling. Uh, the statistics of <laughs> being killed by a serial killer, because I, I thought that would make me feel better. It did. Um, no, well, first I looked up your statistics, your likelihood of getting murdered. Just in general? In general, which is a lot higher than I <laughs> anticipated. It like did what, not make me Everyone's feel percentages of being murdered? In America. What is it? It was like one in 200. How many times have you been in a room with 200 people? I checked it twice. I was like, that can't I mean, be right. Yeah, a lot of people are murdered. But they also count, they apparently count suicide in it too, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, they count that in the statistics. So I don't know how much it is if you took that out. And then also there's like gang related murders and things, which is a lot higher. Hey, this is, what's this got to do with camping? Well, it was about the scary stories. I was trying oh. to help me sleep last night. <laughs> It has everything to do with it. You could be murdered while you're camping. So so then I looked up how likely is it to be murdered by a serial killer because that's usually the scary stories that you hear about. Um, and it's very, very low. <laughs> like less, I think it was like 0.005% chance of like 
<laughs> Am I freaking you out by looking? No, no. <laughs> there they are. This is our 0.5% chance or 0.005% chance. So there you go. Uh, if that makes you feel better, whenever during the Halloween season and whatnot, they just went through. If anything scared you, you could be like, oh, don't worry. The likelihood of me getting killed by a random stranger is very low. <laughs> that did make me feel better. And then I fell asleep. But anyway, I was trying to look up scary Camping stories, and I found a lot, uh, but a lot of them was about people getting attacked by by stra usually strangers <laughs> in the woods in their tent, and uh, I didn't want to have to talk about that because I would like to go camping again <laughs> at some point. Um, but just know that that ha that not often, but it has happened <laughs> that you can get attacked in your tent while you're. <laughs> middle of the woods mm -hmm. um but anyway we're not going to talk about that today i thought it would be more interesting to talk about the camp the most popular campfire stories that were especially now that i know that you didn't really do this um the scary campfire stories that people would tell around campfires nice. my dad was notorious for this because he would do it to the children and then all the moms would have to <laughs> deal with us in the middle of the night being scared because they heard my dad's scary story. And, and he's just snoring stories. away happily. And what's funny, when I was looking these up, um, I don't know if a lot of younger people have heard them because younger people grew up with the internet. Younger, the younger people. The youths. I'm so old. The yo young people grew up with the internet and creepypasta stories and internet stories that went around. These were like the first viral scary creepypasta stories. And I, I have each of these I have heard while I was a child from somebody in some iteration. And they're all really short, short sweet. and sweet, which I think are the scariest stories. I'm ready for the goosebumps. Keep in mind, I was reading these last night while I was alone because you were asleep that's, and it was uh, midnight. That's so smart. it was very smart. <laughs> I'm Good never idea. doing it again. It was not fun. OK, so this story I heard when I was a child while we were camping from a friend of mine. And keep in mind, if you have heard one of these stories, it might be a different version. It's like telephone kind of where yeah, one person hears a story and then they put their different spin and it goes on. And then I'm going to tell you at the end of it whether it was a real story or a fake story. <laughs> so this one has truly messed me up. I think you might have heard it before, but I hate it so much. And I'm going to now share it with all of you so you guys can hate it just as much. I think my sister told me this. I don't know <laughs> if it was her. I blame her for my trauma uh, in in the dead of night. A young woman hears some strange noises in her house for comfort. The woman lets her hand, hand dangle off the edge of her bed so that her dog that's always at her side can lick it in a comforting gesture as in like I hear creepy things in my house, but I don't. But if my dog's not reacting, then it's nothing, which is funny because i always think that if i hear something in the house and dexter's not reacting Same. i'm like okay well then i'm fine it's just like, a normal house noise he would know if he heard yeah. somebody in the house yeah. so i understand this um the pro that process repeats and obviously i'm making this smaller but the process repeats itself throughout the night where she keeps hearing noises in the house and to comfort herself she has her dog lick her hand and all's okay uh but when the woman wakes and walks into her bathroom in the morning, she finds her dog hanging from a noose with a bloody note on her mirror reading, humans can lick too. Oh boy. I hate wow. it so much. I Somebody told me that, obviously, I'm not going to tell these in the best storytelling ability because I don't want them to be really long. But that's the basic story. And people have taken that story and told people over different, campfires, yeah, different, different variations. Now- have you ever heard of that one? I I feel like I have, but yeah, that's that's goosebump inducing. Yeah, it, I hate it. I hate that last line when I first heard it. One I of, thought about it nonstop. One of the <laughs> stories sleep. that I listened to, I hope this wasn't one of yours, was this guy who went hiking and he had a disposable camera. No. So this guy goes hiking. There's this long, this is like, you know, before digital cameras were a thing, obviously before self, like smartphones. He brings a bunch of disposable cameras, takes a bunch of pictures. And he's going, this is a true story, apparently, going, ah. going through them all. And about halfway through, he finds two pictures of himself sleeping. That's creepy. And he was by himself. That's so scary. So, I mean, that happens in like horror movies yeah. a lot of times where they look at their phone and there's a picture of them sleeping yeah. and they're like, who? Yeah, <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> yeah, this is we're having a campfire session right now, guys. 
I hope you're eating your s'mores with your saltine crackers and your Reese's cups. Like I told you, I instructed you to make. Um, so anyway, that story, the licked hand, it's called the licked hand, uh, made rounds around the 1960s as a way to scare marshmallow roasting campers with a, <laughs> with a gut punch of an ending. Gut punch. I will say, because every time I looked up like scary camping stories, this is all I would find were like the the classic campfire urban legends. Nice. So that's why I thought it would fit with this episode so I could traumatize all of you guys who maybe haven't ever been camping. You now gonna, you can feel like you are. <laughs> you going to tell all these to Melody? No. I mean, maybe when she's a teenager, but like, I don't know when I heard them. Definitely not that young. If you told that story to a uh, <laughs> like elementary school kid. That's terrifying. Yeah. So hopefully she doesn't hear anything like this until she's older. Uh, but the tale's first appearance may have come as early as the 18 as 1871 when someone wrote of a story they had heard in England about a jewel thief who evaded detection by licking the hand of a man who awoke to strange noises, reassuring him it was only his dog. So it's rooted somewhat in truth, but not of a murderer yeah. was of a jewel thief. So <laughs> if that makes you feel better. Creepy. Story number two. This one I this one my dad definitely told us around the campfire because it's a little more tame, but Two young lovers are parked in a makeout spot with a news story. When a news story breaks on the radio, a killer has escaped from custody with his sole distinguishing feature being a hook in, in place of an amputated hand. The woman is unsettled and asks her lover to lock the car doors, which he does. But the thought of the hook crashing through the window begins to consume her and she pleads with him to drive off or to drive her home. Annoyed, the boyfriend agrees. When he drops her at home, she notices or she exits the car and notices that a hook is dangling from the door handle. Damn. Meaning she was smart. Good timing she there. Was, right. As he was about to open the door, they pulled off and <laughs> pulled his Got your hook. off of him. Got your hook, Captain Hook. I think, you, I think you've told me that one before. Yeah, that was more of a tame one. Like that I would be kind of okay with That's a little telling more, yeah. younger kids, but... Um, so the truth behind that story, because all of these are like urban legends yeah. that, came, that are like supposed to be warnings to people. But aside from the hook hand twist, couples who parked in designated lovers lane spaces had plenty of reason to be terrified. Um, and then it basically goes into like, obviously, it's known that like back in the 70s, a lot of serial killers. Maybe it's not known. Maybe I just know it because I listen to a lot of murder mystery podcasts. But if you were parked in a car at a lover's lane, you had like a 50% chance of somebody trying to kill you. Damn, that's high. I feel like back in the 70s. Uh, yeah. So it was like outlining somebody who used to do it. So this was kind of an urban legend as a warning to tell teenagers to stop going to lover's lanes like at night alone. So just a form of Planned Parenthood or something? Yeah, it probably Birth was. Control. They were like, how do we get these teenagers to stop going and make out at long? We'll long kill them. Lane? Let's scare them. Yeah, we'll, we'll send out some serial killer man to scare them and they'll stop <laughs> doing it. Oh, this one's rough. This one I, okay, so this one I did not know and I read it last night and it I did not like it. <laughs> Trigger warning? Trigger warning. Um, in, this, uh, in this story, two roommates leave to go to a party. For the ease of storytelling, let's, Call one of them Lucy and the other one Miranda. Early in the night, Lucy leaves to, or early in the night at the party, Lucy leaves the party to head home and grab her wallet, which she accidentally left behind. Upon retreat, upon getting home to retrieve her wallet, Lucy does not turn on the lights because she knows exactly where it is on the table right when you walk in. Lucy then goes back to the party re to rejoin her friend. Later that night, the other roommate, Miranda, leaves the party early to get some sleep. The party animal roommate, Lucy, <laughs> later on finally goes back home. She again does not turn on the lights as not to wake her roommate, who she sees a shadow of in the, in the darkness sleeping on the couch. In the morning, she finds her roommate dead in the living room on the couch and written in blood on, on their large mirror in the living room reads, aren't you glad you didn't turn the light on? <laughs> Damn. To yes. break it down, yeah. Break it Basically, down. when she went back to get her wallet and keys, he was, whoever he, I don't, <laughs> whoever it was, was there in the apartment waiting, but she didn't turn the light on and just grabbed her stuff and left. So she, he didn't get her. And then <laughs> the other roommate went back early and turned the lights on and found this guy or whoever and killed her and left. 
And then basically she came back and her roommate was dead, but she couldn't see her because she didn't turn the lights on and just assumed she was sleeping on the couch and went Sheesh. to the room. I was like, Dude. I heard that last night. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what is it about these urban legend people writing blood messages on blood mirrors? Messages. They just love writing blood messages on mirrors. <laughs> so some Freaky. crafty guys. What's the, uh, the lore behind that one? Uh, there wasn't really any. <laughs> it was just scary story about young That's women terrifying. young women making sure that they check their surroundings when they go home most of them are about like yeah making turn sure your they, lights on yeah turn your lights on don't well no well i guess the message is she survived because she didn't turn the lights on this seems all backwards she survived because she was a party animal not a responsible person and also <laughs> didn't turn the lights on <laughs> so yeah <laughs> maybe the lesson is don't go home alone you're never safe <laughs> that's the lesson you're never safe don't trust anyone oh my god okay my last story is a little bit of a slow burn but it pays off at the end a slow so. burn i have heard this one before but i think i heard it on the internet but this is another old one um a man enters a hotel and goes to the front desk to retrieve his key before he heads to his room the receptionist tells him that there is a locked room on his floor with no number on it, and he is not to disturb it or try to look inside the room under any circumstances. Why would you even? Why, why would you? Yeah, I feel like if you not didn't even say anything, yeah. yeah, they would have been like, "Oh, it's a utility closet. Yeah. Why would I even bother?" She wanted him to. Exactly. The man finds this odd, but obeys her instructions on the first night. However, the man has an increasing curiosity about the room, and he notices that it has a fairly large keyhole. So he decides to take a quick peep on the second day. The room is apparently blasting some cold air as he can feel it on his eye, but he sees a hotel room just like his with a pale white woman sitting on the corner of her bed, her back to him. The man is still curious, but he decides not to knock on the door, proceeding to his own room. Why would you knock on the, first of all, <laughs> you see a woman just sitting on her bed. Why would you knock on their door? Because the check I come in? Okay. You all good? They told me not to do this. <laughs> Forbidden love. <laughs> I just want to see. <laughs> On the third day, he looks through the keyhole again, but this time he only sees the color red. He figures that the inhabitant noticed his spying and blocked the keyhole with something red. However, he cannot keep his gnawing thoughts at bay, so he goes to see the receptionist and confesses that he had looked into the room. She tells that man that a man had murdered his wife in that room and her ghost still haunts that room to this day. Oddly enough, those people were not normal, they were pale white, but their eyes were completely red. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. So when he was, he was looking, looking through the people, yeah. she was looking at him through the people. <laughs> damn. Yeah, my scary story. My Thanks for the goosebumps. Scary stories. <laughs> so those are all. That's what I was reading last night before I fell asleep. That was good. Glad you did that. Yeah. So now you know some scary stories you can tell kids. Tell, I'm going to tell my that friends. That one was pretty tame. I mean, it's definitely freaky, but it's more tame than yeah. the... I, I feel like it was like not not a tame story. Tame. Not a tame story. Tame. Sandwich it in. That was spooky and creepy. Yeah. I like scary. I like like... I feel like last week I was doing more true crime stories about the pixie stick man and yeah. the, and I felt gross. It's funny. I, I was re-listening back to our podcast and you could tell how uncomfortable I was talking about the specifics of what happened to the kid yeah. during the poisoning of like that first story. I don't want to give too much away if you haven't listened to it, but you could tell in my voice, I was not used to talking that way <laughs> about true. I don't know how true crime podcasters talk specific, like in specifics about certain stuff. It's one thing to listen to it, but like, constantly talk about it to talk about it and go into the details yeah that's freaky so i didn't want to do that this week i did read some really terrible stories about stuff happening to families while they were camping and i was like i'm not <laughs> not doing it no let's, more camping let's do some scary stories that are more urban legend than truth yeah i think or campfire stories there's there's definitely a lot of sp spookiness to camping and it's it is creepy but it's also beautiful and that's kind of like life oh <laughs> it's a lot of unknown and you know you're afraid of especially when you know when it, at night when it's dark out um well, it's also there's it. like there's safety in having a home i guess and society and when you're away from society and your home 
you don't feel as safe because you're yeah. out in the element. You're, you're, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. You're more susceptible to the elements mm -hmm. and creatures and <laughs> yeah, slender man lives in oh. the woods. So there's that. That's who that is out there. I always say <laughs> that's who that is. A tall slender dude. Yeah. Not a park ranger. Yeah. I don't know. He's not as trendy anymore. So he kind of just, I think hangs out out there. Maybe he retired to, <laughs> he retired now that he lost his internet fame as much. <laughs> <laughs> He's retired to the woods. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll do someday. Yeah. No. I will say <laughs> scares me too much. Even you talking about why you like it gives me anxiety. Sorry. No, I enjoy don't be sorry. it. I'm sure there's things I enjoy that gives you anxiety. I think there's like my murder mystery podcast. Yes. Yeah. But I also <laughs> think it's very good for people to disconnect and to go out into nature. So I would oh, leave yeah. you with the idea or thought. You of, don't have to go camping to do that. You could. You, you can just go, go hiking. hiking. <laughs> you can go it's outside. Different. It's different when you go camping because you're out there. You're stuck out there. You're stuck out there <laughs> and you're really in nature. So I would say if you've never done it, to look into it, to try it. It's very... Maybe try RV camping first or like yeah, rent or go to a Or go to a campground. But go to a campground, but it's not the same. And I know not everyone has... No, but I meant like to start. It's yeah. a good starting place. You don't want to start with the hard stuff when you don't know what you're doing. No, but I will say, if you have been thinking about it or not thinking about it, uh, I do highly recommend going camping. Not in the middle of nowhere, but... Not at a campground, but, you know, in the woods. Or out in your backyard. Sure. that's. I like I'm giving people, like, the less scared. Yeah, I'm even scared to go tenting in our backyard. Yeah. We see bears, bears around here. Yeah, but we have a fence. <laughs> um, I'm just not a good kid. You're just not a good outdoorsy person. I think I have to, like, have adult beverages. That also helps if you are of age. It Adult does, beverages helps you to sleep through. It does the make things a little a little easier when you're you you know and s'mores just fall asleep. Just get really full on s'mores and adult beverages if you're of age, and then it's a good time. I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Uh, others, if you go on my Instagram, there's some pictures and videos from some of my camping trips. If you're curious to see what it looks like where what I go, his camping is like yeah. So yeah. go go check it out. One of the things I was talking about before, I really enjoy like the prep and all that. It is exhausting. It is tiring. And I'm the one who always does it. I don't have any. You're probably the only one. I have one friend. I have one of my friends has is, has only ever invited me to go camping with him. And I wasn't able to go that one time. But it's always me inviting people or setting up the trip. I, I would love. I wish I had people or friends that would invite me and like set things up so I could stop doing I'll do so it. So much of the work. I'll do it. Sure you will. It won't be, uh, I'll be, be like, glamping? yeah, we're going to go camping. And then I'm going to bring you to, yeah, glamping. I want to do it because it's like really nice. Like what your brother did. Did yeah. you see the place he went yeah, to? Yeah, I'd do that. Cool. I'll do that for sure. It's not camping. <laughs> no, but you're out in nature. Yeah, that's true. It's like a perfect get medium. Out. It's like I get my stuff if and anything, then you can get your stuff. You can take away from this episode is to get out in nature. Yeah, there you go. Because I love it. And when you're really engrossed in it and you're living in it and you're sleeping in it, there's just this disconnect that you feel from the overabundance of technology that we have today. And you can also use some of my stories to freak out your friends around the campfire. <laughs> I forget how we um, end the episode every time. I don't. And remember. Oh, that's right. I got to sneeze. I've had to sneeze for a minute. <laughs> And if remember, I sound a little, little I have to sneeze <laughs> if I sound a little sickly it's because I have like a little dry throat thing going on it's kind of made it's I thought it was gone and I, I feel like <laughs> yeah, it's gone it. down my nasal into my throat oh. area now felt better yesterday but remember everything is creepy oh mm. camping is creepy <laughs> 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 <laughs>